Hello and welcome back to Alex Go Sailing. Plan for this episode is getting this mast here rotated and upright. Don't know how hard that's going to be. It hasn't been raised in about 10 years with the mast raising system that it has. So we've got to start with some rope lengths, some bolts and pins, lengths of things and geometry because there's poles and bars and stuff. So it should be quite interesting and hopefully not as sketchy as I'm used to. Right, I'm just looking down at some of the mast raising poles. There's two more fitted to the boat that run up to the front there and one over there. Um, but these are the rest of them that I need to fit. So there's these here and there. They connect together. That's the, where the boom rests. That goes down just where the companionway door is. And then over here, it joins onto the base of this main pole, which is the longest one which kind of joins on where that spreader is over there. Um, these are the shorter ones and they connect, but you've got a little screw adjustment at the bottom, which I've newly put on because one of these piles was slightly bent. So I've had that bent straight and had these new threaded bars put on with new pins because the old ones are a bit rubbish. Over here, this is like a central frame. It has this crossbar, which isn't attached. And then these ropes, there should be two more ropes that need attaching, which go on down to these frames at the back here. There's two little clips on there because this kind of lifts up and supports the mast as it comes down. But this goes kind of in line with the mast when it's upright and then it kind of like hoists it down, so to speak. And then exactly the same on the other side and then adjustable poles at the front there. So fingers crossed, we can figure this out. We just got to attach it all, make sure it's the right length. Because when that mast base spins up and lands in its base over there, you got to make sure it's the right height and uh, it's not all crooked and adjusted because you've got these adjustments here. I think they're going to be wound up quite a bit more. Only one way to do it and that's by doing it. So let's get cracking. Right. I've roughly adjusted the length on this thread here. It wound all the way down, three threads off. Done the same on the other side, which I've already attached. Just got to slide this pin out, right there. So I've got to attach it to this aftmost one, which seems a little weird, but that's what all the pictures show in the diagrams, which I'll put up on the screen now. I'll just pop this pin in. It's not the tightest fitting of uh, pins. You can see there's like a, I don't know, half the width of that flange is another gap. So I could put washers in there if I want it tighter, but I think it does have to be somewhat loose because of the angle it's at to where the mast sits at the minute. So that's in, let's put this down and insert the pin. So that's it there, located in. I've put it underneath these, uh, these shrouds because I think they should be, because when this mast picks up, it tilts forward like that. So you want all of those to be off to the side. Clamber up here. I need to bring my pliers. Put me pliers. This is the other end where it's attached. Previously, it's just had wire stays on there, because I think the guide never actually took it out of the water um, and used the mast raising system. So it's been inactive. And this is also a brand spanking new mast. Brand new everything for the master. They bent it in transportation for the guy before me. So they had to replace it. So I'm quite happy I got a brand new mast, but they didn't set up the mast raising system for some reason. So that's the job that I have now. All right, prop that down. Well, you can see here, there's like this little uh, metal flange which pivots on this pin that sticks out of this mast base here. So. That's what attaches and I'm glad I have that. So I'm just going to connect this up now and hopefully I have it at roughly the right length. You can adjust these shorter bars to put it straight. So hopefully I don't have to mess around too much because I've already put on the other side. So hopefully it'll just be a case of whacking it on. How close are we going to be? Go on. Not very. About the full diameter of this pin away.
Right, so what I did was twist that shorter pole, which adjusted it in. That is still fairly loose, somewhat straight still, so hopefully that's all I need. I've been putting the pin in top down, so hopefully that's not going to interfere with anything. And I'll just slide this pin in. Right, that's attached. The other side's attached. I was adjusting these shorter ones, which run down there and up and over there. These are done up. Right, the next job on the list is attaching the bendy bars that kind of run around the back. Um, they should sit in this, these little brackets down here. Same on the other side. And then loop them around and there's just some ropes that attach. And then we'll attach the other frame. So let's figure that out. This. Oh, it's heavy. Should do something like that. Maybe not quite like that. All right, I've gone and grabbed my tools, as you can see. Just going to take this bolt off. Like that. See that there. All right. That's close enough. Right. So. Oh. I think I'm also going to have to break out the polish and clean all this stuff up. But I think I've got to clean the rest of the boat first, so we'll see. Right, that bolt's in, so that's nice and tight. This is tight, the front's tight. I'm going to go put, do the other side, same as this. Maybe connect them in the middle first, because that might be a bit tricky. So I'll do that. Right, up on top of the boat, you can see this is the, it's like a, I don't know, somewhat plasticky kind of looking thing for the boom to sit on. And you've got these little brackets here, which have to have ropes and stuff attached, but I think I'm going to put quick releases on there not have these shackles because I think it's a better design because this does have to be removed at some point I think but I'll figure that out I need to swing this round a bit more straight go on oh I've got to make this Shackle thing going over? Yeah, there you go. Is it the next one yet? I oh, know. You can see the join, there's a little join here where they sit, so I guess that's it. Although, I don't know if you can see there, that hole doesn't even line up. You know, whacking device. Well, it's a bit better. Sorry, threads. Do you always notice I never use a hammer? It's always a spanner. Multi purpose tool. Where's the nut? Who's needs the nut? Alright, we'll whack this underneath here. Hopefully, I didn't mess up the threads too much. Where'd you look at that? I'll get the cross egg. See? Multi use. I won't go crazy tight, I'll just do just enough. All right, well, unbolt this one. Don't drop the nut. Lovely jubbly. Right, looking off to the front, got the two poles set up. Then from here, back, we've got that frame. So there'll be two ropes that'll come off. So these tracks is what the frame just down there connects to. Um, kind of wraps around the mast a bit, but thing in there, thing in there. Right, got this frame here. You can see at the end there, there's two little mounting sides for each of the ropes. There's this old rope on there. 
so I don't think it's the right length, but it's there. And you need that top bit pointing towards the front of the boat. It says the instructions, and then it does look a bit bent to me, but I think it's meant to look like that. And one in there, this one's a bit further back for some reason, but I have no idea where to position this car in relation to anything, so hopefully. So at least it matches. And then on this end of the rope, I don't know if you can see that, there's this stainless steel plate. There's two holes at the top, one hole at the bottom. And I'm assuming this one hole allows a uh, rope to go in here, goes down to the bottom of the mast, goes through the mast, and then runs along the deck back to this winch. And then you grind that winch, it pulls on this, pulls on that frame, pulls on the other thing, and apparently the mast goes up, so it's only one way to find out. Right, so that's all the framework sorted out and bolted up. Um, don't know if they're adjusted to the right length. I might do some uh, few measurements, see if I can roughly figure out how long it should be. But I'm, it's probably easier to figure it out and try, just try and see what happens. But what I've got to do now is sort out the lines, make sure they're the right length and run them back and get one to the winch make sure that works and then also when they unstepped my mast in the yard they undid um, all of these shrouds not at the top but at the base so i'll need to be reattached into these brackets here and that looks like quite a tight tolerance on this bracket down here so hopefully it'll fit but we've also got to attach the uh forestay which has the furler on it because uh, they took the pin out and slid it forward, although it doesn't really need to do that because it's got a support at the front. But what I'll end up doing at some point is making 3D printed mounts that kind of sit on the mast or strapped to the mast that allow that profile to sit nicely on the mast so it doesn't like bend and kink around and, and also rub against the uh, mast itself. So that should be quite good. But yeah, I'm gonna go get some rope, start putting things on. So hopefully, we can get this mast up today. Right, I decided to pack it in last night, but I'm out this morning and we're gonna get those lines run and get this mast up, so let's get started. Right, I run the lines to where I think the interesting thing is the length because I don't think any of them are going to be the right length. And the only way I'm going to find out is actually trying. There is one problem I'm facing though is that at the base of the mast where the rope that runs, that blue line, runs down to the base, it goes through the mast and out the other side and then back down to this winch here. Now there's a block in there which sticks out and it's a sharp edge, it doesn't run nicely to the next uh, block. So. I'm gonna have to grind that back maybe to make it a nice angle straight to the next block, but it's only one way to find out. Right, I think I've got it all set up now. Put the pins in, they just reach, they're quite tight. So I'm not sure whether the big pole's too long because I have a lot of adjustment in the shorter ones, but we'll only find out when I put it up because if it doesn't touch the base, that means they're too long. So I've got to put it back down again and hopefully it's not a problem for everything else because I read in the instruction manual that this frame, if it's too far back on the tracks, it can actually pull off and rip the track off or whatever. So you've got to be careful. And it said four inches from the end, the second um, locking hole has to be fitted. So that's what it is. So I think we've just got to be very careful. I did also lengthen these ones. So fingers crossed. And you can see how the uh, furling system kind of lays off to the side. So hopefully that stays there. There's like a little guiding fork at the front which holds it. So all I have to do is grind the winch. I'm gonna get my brother out to help me hold the furling system forward um, and also run around and fix anything that's broken. Um, but yeah, apart from that, we should be good to go. So you're gonna watch that over there and see if anything goes wrong. So hopefully it's not entertaining for you.
right. It's gotten a little darker, but we have a problem. We've got about an inch underneath the mast base, and you can see the mast is slightly swept back. So I think this long pole here is uh, a bit too long. But the thing is, we had the uh, threads at the bottom remade, and I've only got about three threads left. So hopefully that's enough. If not, what I can do is go to a machine shop, get them to cut off a bit more of this and weld it a bit lower. Now, as you may have guessed already, this was before I had done the compression post repair to raise the roof back up to the correct height, as you would have seen in the last episode. I decided to do a bunch more testing to see how much I could adjust the mask by before doing all the work needed. And for me, it was very obvious that to keep the geometry correct, I had to sort out the roof to get that extra inch that I needed. But would you just look at how epic and easy this system is to raise and lower the mast? Now after completing the compression post repair and installing the hatches, it was the time to test out the mast raising system again. This time round is a completely different story as the geometry worked as it should and it didn't take much adjusting to get it situated properly and I shouldn't have to fiddle around with it again in the future. Now I will do a proper video on the whole mast raising process once I've nailed it down myself but that's it for now, so let me know what you think of this mass raising system in the comments below as I'd love to know what you think. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.